This week on First Issue Club, Throne of Bones, Do- <laughs> Dome of Gomes, uh, the d- Drone of Loans. I got. <laughs> you okay over there, buddy? ID. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'll get out of this. We believe in you. A first issue club covers IDW's Road of Bones. Yeah, there it that is. Was, that felt good. That felt real good. Thanks for coming back for another episode of First Issue Club. I am Mike D, and with me as always are Caitlin. Greg and Budget King. Hello, friends. Hey. Salutations. Hi, hi. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, we get together once a week and we talk about one thing and almost one thing alone <laughs> solely. <laughs> The first issues that come out each week. I was trying to do a thing with the one. Yeah. One Almost so, one thing only. Once a week. <laughs> but we do get off track, and that would be a lie if I told you we talked about one thing, which we don't do. Too many we, qualifiers are yeah. my favorite thing. Well, what people yes. that really don't so know love, is I'm, we only talk comic books with one another. I right. know nothing about yeah. either of you I've never other seen. than what comic books yeah. you like. We've really <laughs> declared a moratorium mm-hmm. on anything else. Yep. Um, you want to go around the table and tell each other something we don't know about each other already oh yeah i like i love that kind of stuff i'm addicted to taking out loans <laughs> oh oh wow mm-hmm. tell me about that i would p- prefer not to we said we'd do one thing <laughs> each and anything no else would be too much yeah, information yep one um, thing one thing normally means don't ever say anything else about it <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> um you guys may not know this about me but i am actually a clone oh, oh. Hey. yeah i couldn't tell not the original you're not the original. You're not the original? Mm-mm. Did you kill your uh, host? One thing and one thing only, boys. Oh, sorry. oh. Yeah, no questions. Dang it. <laughs> um, my name is, have we said our names? Or just people now recognize no, our I voices? No, I introduced you. You can pay attention next time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ahem. Uh, well, every night when you guys put out your garbage, or the night you put it out before garbage day, I go around and collect things from it, and I am building um, sta- uh, replicas of you out of your garbage. Oh, yeah. I love that. Interesting. Mm-hmm. It's so personal with our own things, mm-hmm. with our own refuse. Yeah. Do do you ever like mix a uh, budget, a little bit of Budget King into your mic statue? Ah, well, I'll break the rule here and I'll keep answering questions. <laughs> one thing, <laughs> one, thing <laughs> up, one thing only. <laughs> okay. One one thing I'm going to hold you to it. <laughs> well, you guys I are going to find out anyway you. when I kidnap you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I walked you right into this trap. <laughs> um, so I started a new club. It's called, well, I'll tell you what it happens and I'll tell you the name of it. So um, I actually, I pretend like I go to sleep and then I wake up at like 11 when my wife is asleep and I stay up the whole night and I do like really deranged stuff. It's called Deranged Club. And it's just you? Just you. Um, anybody could join. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start a podcast. So you're There's a, more than one thing about <laughs> it. Damn it. I love talking <laughs> so much. Fucking blew it. You're a, you're a criminal. All right. <laughs> Well, mm-hmm. three-way is that, tie. Is with... that part of that? I bet that's part of the freak life. <laughs> mm-hmm. oh, I shouldn't yeah. even know that. How I'll do I have, know that? I also have a fig Newton stuck to my back. <laughs> what? You're, now you're oversharing. <laughs> yeah. I regret this segment. <laughs> Before we get into the fantastic road of bones, I thought we'd do a little catch up. Uh, but what have you guys just been into lately? Let's flex a little. On ourselves. So, uh, recently, I found out that, um, well, I have like a weird, not a disease, but it just, uh, my body isn't functioning correctly and I can't drink alcohol. Yeah, his body isn't a wonderland. My body's not a wonderland. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, so, in that uh, world of stuff, I was like, well, it feels like I'm straight edge. I was straight edge until I was 26. Wow, so, really? Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I've been listening to tons of straight edge, like hardcore music and then tons of interviews with like straight edge bands. I feel like I'm an imposter cause they chose the lifestyle and I got forced into the lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> You're here willingly. Yeah. Um, but like, there's a lot of like younger kids do it's, it. It is so fascinating to me that like, it's still a thing that like 21 year olds are doing. I was doing it cause I was a loser. Um, 
And uh, but now people, these people, these ki- uh, kids, I guess they're not kids; they're adults. They seem really cool, and they're making that choice and making the same. The music sounds exactly the same. That's also funny to me. <laughs> uh, that's the end of what. Are, what are you guys into? <laughs> um, so I caught up on a Shaky Kane series called The Beef. I think we covered the first issue of it on this podcast, but I never kept reading it. That was one of my favorite covers that we read yes. last year. It was so good. And in the back of each book, they do a great process discussion with the art director on how he designed and made each individual cover. And that's like a deep dive thing that I i don't think I've ever gotten in any other comic book. So mm-hmm. that was really unique and interesting. Beyond that, they talk a lot about how cows are treated in farming facilities. I, I remember that milking. from the first issue. And each book is... It gets a little more intense with the amount of information and what information they give you about farms. Are you going to not eat red meat now? It made me not want to eat red meat or consume milk. I haven't made that life change yet. But, <laughs> I just really want but, to. But no, it really just like I've never like read a book or s- seen a movie that had an agenda and thought, oh, this might actually change my life. Like this was the first time that it ever happened to me. And, huh. it's, and it's like a goofball comic book. Um, so that may be part of its appeal, though. Yeah, yeah. It's not necessarily so preachy as it is. Just like, look, we've done a lot of the research for you, mm-hmm. and this is still going to be an enjoyable experience for you overall. Yeah, they that's came. A, that's a they came down to my level, and they uh, <laughs> and they brought they brought comedy into it and drew funny <laughs> pictures with it. So. I just imagine you reading <laughs> this, and then like. All of a sudden, in conversations, you just like start like word vomiting all of these facts and statistics, and you're like, "Oh my god, how do I know? Yeah. I know all." I've of been this. corrupted. <laughs> yeah, in the middle of like a business meeting, I'm just like, "Did you guys know that they pull calves away from their mothers, and the mothers cry for days? Mother cows cry for days. They do. <laughs> they do." <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that is that's fucking sad if that's true. Oh, oh yeah. it is. Um, Our old I read it in a comic really book. It that. must be true. <laughs> I remember. Yeah. I remember somebody that the cell they were trying to get me to not drink milk was like, "Did you know that we're the only species that drinks another species' breast milk?" It kind of sounds fucked up, but it's like we're also the only other species that communicates with a language. Yeah, and, and uses like, uh, drives cars. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so created a religion. <laughs> <laughs> the dolphin religion. <laughs> No. That's why most animals are just blissfully happy. I don't know that creating a religion makes you smarter. Oh. No, zing. (laughs) Um, Shout out to one more trade that I read. Sleepless. Oh, did that turn out to be good? Yes. So I actually liked the first issue of that. Yeah, me too. And I just never kept reading it. And the first story arc... A fabuloso. If, <laughs> if, if you like romance stuff, it's like not too in your face, but just like casual romance, fantasy. Like this is like so right up your alley. And if you are just a comic book nerd and you think there's no place in your life for anything with a romance twist, then I would say give this a try and see if it's like something you just haven't opened your eyes to before and might actually be interested in. I do remember it had a little bit of, like, political undertones. Right. Like, it as far did. as the main character having to navigate that. Yeah. It so, reminded me a lot. I'm I'm catching up. I was a very late bloomer on Game of Thrones, and all the hype this year has gotten me caught up. And Sleepless really reminds me of a lot of the, like, inner workings of, like, a monarchy and the high society high society and when someone switches out a place of power how that changes everything for everyone so that aspect of it's super interesting and then just like in game of thrones which i'm sure everyone listening to this podcast probably loves there's relationship drama Mm -hmm. in that and it's probably one of the pieces people like the most about it accept it in your comic books too there's room for that (laughs) we're not too uh to man, masculine or manly to uh, handle like a little bit of relationship drama in a comic book and tr- have more of that. There's not enough in comic books, and that's part of why people don't take them seriously. Uh, agreed. Right. They just think it's a bunch of grown men in tights. Punching each other. Yep. <laughs> I, grown men in tights lusting after each other. I was going to say, do some more relationships do have that. <laughs> I, so. I would like more of that. <laughs> uh, Teen Titans is doing a good job with romance right now. Are they? And, and there's uh, a little bit of like, um, 
lesbian, I guess. Or LGBT. Yeah, crush isn't crush into uh, into a lady. Yep, into women, and so they're navigating that. Same champions is doing a little bit of that. Is, yeah, Viv and Ironheart or whatever. Yeah. And so uh, I think that's that, yeah. We certainly didn't have that growing up with like our high school books or like if we were kids uh-uh, and reading no. like high school comic age comic books. That was not a trope or anything that happened. No, the relation, the extent of relationships were like. Lois Lane hoping Superman was okay and Mary Jane hoping Peter Parker was okay. Yeah. Like it was just a woman in an apartment somewhere <laughs> hoping someone hoping was someone okay. was okay. <laughs> and now they have their own comics. So yeah. boom. Booyah. Yep. Or Batman just fucking Playboys or fucking like uh, porn stars or whatever. What? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> when did that happen? You mean Bruce Wayne. <laughs> Sorry, that's what I meant. Yeah. Not Batman. <laughs> Isn't it truth funny that like his secret identity is kind of actually his alter ego? Mm. And he's like actually like more Batman than he is Bruce Wayne in his heart <laughs> if he's being real with himself. <laughs> don't you think that? Uh no. I don't I never read a Batman book. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he's more bat than he is man. Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> Caitlin gets it. <laughs> he sleeps upside down. <laughs> He uses radar and sonar to get around. <laughs> Speaking of which, this just reminded me, that book that we're not reading, the Kevin Eastman book. That, oh, yeah. That, to set that up, though. We almost covered this. Okay, yeah. So we almost covered a book called uh, Drawing Blood. Yeah. Um, which is a semi-autographical book about Kevin Eastman um, that he's writing with like another like kind of movie producer in the hopes of maybe getting it to be a television show. But in lieu of that, they were kickstarting it. And so they did a companion book called, like, Radical Ragdolls. I'm messing it up, but there's, like, four R's, and it's essentially, like, the Ninja Turtles or whatever. Anyway, um, I don't know which parts are true or not about Kevin Eastman's, like, autobiography. Obviously, that he wrote the Turtles and then he made some money off of it. They get mixed in with a Lithuanian crew uh, that's, like, killing his friends and stuff. Spoiler alert. But one part of it that I'm realizing now is he has a bunch of ex-wives and one of them is a porn star that he just, like, fucks on the side. (laughs) And I'm kind of like, okay, cool, Kevin. Yeah, sure, Kevin. Okay. (laughs) Whatever you say, bud. Well, if you read the older uh, Ninja Turtles books, they're very, like, hyper-masculine, chauvinistic, Mm -hmm. like... These they're, they're they're supposed to be young teenage boys in like what the eighties or early nineties yeah. when, when he wrote them the first time probably eighties right uh, I 80s. think so yeah. yeah 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 what's cool about in this retake of it the rag dolls are female so the Ninja Turtles are are cats that are are female oh cool okay in, interesting take yeah, yeah. Hmm. so you bought the book about him talking about his life and then the companion book. Which is this faux Ninja Turtles. Correct, yeah. It's like, a oh, so they released both of those. Yeah, and that's a one-off. So, like, you know the reference material to, like, the what is going to be a one of eight of the Kevin Eastman story. Okay. That's interesting. It was, it was really... I look, conceptually, that's a cool thing to do. And it, and it was definitely entertaining. Mm-hmm. And in the back of the book, they were kind of like, we know this should be a television show. And it was like, and it was like, yeah, we know, we know. It kind of should be like it. That's kind of the way it it works and stuff. And I, I was definitely entertained with it. It, it. Like it felt like fun. I don't know that I would recommend it or pick it up, but as a cool concept, if I was a Kevin Eastman fan, I would. I am a Kevin Eastman fan, but I'm not like huge, huge into him. I do have a Ninja Turtles tattoo. Um, so. <laughs> Are you sure you're not a huge Kevin <laughs> Eastman fan? Sounds like you're one of the big fans. Yeah. Um, but I, yeah, it's it, it's a fun book. Well, wasn't the issue that it wasn't completely accessible? We like our shop. Is that what it was? Oh, yeah. Did they, did our they shop didn't that? have it. As in Clint's? Yes. Well, well, I got it from Clint's. I think it was out. It was. It was out. Uh, but By what's the, the what's the accessibility there. part about it? I guess just that we oh, couldn't it, cover it because it was already sold out at our that, shop. Oh. And it wasn't even on Comicology. Oh, yeah. so that's so. What it is is that it's like a Kevin Eastman printing shop exclusive of, of like a, it's not a publisher that it's like I think the publisher's called like Kess or something like that and so I, I think it just that, wasn't on people's radars to I think, order it yeah it didn't have a lot of preview hype the marketing on it was pretty bad so you had to kind of know about the 
Uh, yeah, he had to be like a Kevin Eastman super fan or something. <laughs> yeah, in his fan club. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, drawing blood's coming out this week. I'm going to buy both the companion ep- issue and the main storyline. There's Wait, some good okay. variants. Hang on. I, <laughs> I'm going to rub my tattoo for good luck before I get it. Hang on. I am now drawing the conclusions here. Um, <laughs> about us or no, 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 that no, we're no, all no, your no, bully? No, no. Listen, listen, listen to this. Okay, I totally forgot about this. So I had preview ordered this. I had asked her to order this. This is the same day that the comic book owner of our shop asked me if I would continue to do uh, indie preview orders for her. Who's doing them currently? Nobody. But she, like, ordered a bunch. I'm realizing this now as I'm saying this. She ordered a bunch of, like, the books that I said, hey, I know you don't get these publishers. Could you order these publishers for me? Mm -hmm. And so she had sold out of this book by the time I got it there. (sighs) So she was like, in her mind, she was like, oh. This guy's got a pulse on <laughs> how to make me more money. I should, I should just leave her leader astray, though. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like you should be like, yeah, what do you want to throw my way for it? Like, that's yeah, not something I will you do for you something. for nothing. Free comics? I know. Total. Well, the way that she, like, posed it was, like, that she did me a favor, which she did. I mean, I did get the book that I wanted. She knows oh. you can get that order. Oh, also, guess else. what? You paid for it. That's a base service of comic book shops to put in your order <laughs> for the books you that want. That was and like what we would do at Hastings. The, That's fucking, not like a- yeah. the fucking gall. It's not like you went to a Long John Silver's and were like, hey, can you give me this comic? <laughs> And they're like, Could you okay. order something from Burger King for me and have it brought here? <laughs> yeah. Customer's always right. Yeah, yeah. That would be going above and beyond. She did her job. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. God, what a <laughs> jerk. I should have slapped her. <laughs> she would have had it coming. Uh. So, I do think it's something that could be unintentional. Like just knowing how like money minded they are it yeah. comes off as weird. She didn't hear herself asking me to do work for her for free. I will yeah. tell you. Or that. in general. Yeah. yeah. But she just, I don't think she, she just doesn't, she's not very self-aware. Like most comic book I, people. Oh, can I, can Stop. I say, can I say this though too? Yeah, continue um, your rant. I will continue my rant. <laughs> I, went, Miller. I went to fucking a, uh, <laughs> start his clock. <laughs> Let me, please start my clock. I, I had a, I had a pretty like long week last week. Like it was, it was, um, just draining. All seven days. And all seven days. And I got out early on Friday and I said, I want to talk comic books with people. Um, not you guys. I talk about with you all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I strangely didn't get a text from you on Friday. Uh, so. so I drove to Raytown to go to a vintage stock. What? There's a vintage stock in Raytown? Uh, like off I-70. Oh, shit. Um, and I just like essentially perused their dollar bins until the workers came by and like asked talked. if you needed help yeah and like <laughs> I roped them into like conversations about comic books did uh, they like that it was so great it was like I, I loved it we, we talked for like 30 minutes and they gave me insane discounts on stuff and I was like literally I've been here one time and had a better experience than I have at my current comic book <sighs> store of which I dropped like Tons of money. Too at much it. money. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it, it made me like reinvigorated. I think the, um, I told them listen to this podcast, so I hope I'm not getting this wrong, but they seemed a lot younger than I am and just like way no- more knowledgeable about comics and just like into all the cool, right things about comics. It was like just fun to stumble into somewhere and yeah. be like, this is cool. Awesome. So if you work at the Raytown <laughs> Vintage Stock, hey. Yeah, fuck yeah. You you revitalized our budget king, <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> you gave me hope in the world. You also host a podcast about comic books that like thousands of people listen to, so you, you don't think you'd have to work so hard to trap people into talking comic books with you. <laughs> well, that's a good point, but I, I don't get a lot of IRL comic book with like strangers. Like, that's we, true, We have yeah. our social. Well, and yeah. if your um, shop isn't really that into actually engaging in... The medium that everyone's supposed yeah. to be. At the time that I go, it's just like nervous old white guys being like, "Did I write the, Did I buy the right book? Did I buy the right book?" Like, and I uh, yeah, checking the corners to make sure they're yeah. not creased weird. That and, happened to me today at our shop, though. Like, I was just randomly talking to somebody, and they're just like, "We were just like, man, it'd be a lot easier not to buy all these War of the Realm tie-ins if it wasn't so fucking good." 
And then like three people in the same aisle I was in just were just like, <laughs> yeah, it is pretty good. Like we all had this shared <laughs> moment of just like, this is a really good uh, Marvel event that's happening right now. And I was like, this is so awesome. I'm part of a like a cool moment right here in a comic book shop. He's like typically I don't like all the tie-ins and it's pretty arduous <laughs> it was, it to was. follow them. But I, they're actually kind of a delight. Oh my God. I, <laughs> so nerdy, but I loved it. I actually was having that thought this morning. Like I was like. World of the Realms is maybe one of the best events I've read. <laughs> it's very good. It's very, very good. Well, we've certainly covered it. Marvel owes us a few dollars. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think <laughs> they don't need us They're telling people it's awesome. They're clearly worried about yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of events going on this summer. Mm-hmm. We have this War of the Realms. We have Absolute Carnage. We have a Leviathan. Oh, the Superman uh, thing? The Superman Leviathan event happening. Did that start today? It did, with, okay. the, with the Superman comic. And then, like, um, Flash Year One is happening is this summer. Is that an event, though? Isn't that just a... Well, it's kind of... Well, it's a big event for Flash fans, like, because of the new 52 Rebirth thing. Like, his new origins has haven't been really explained, so this is a big kind of cool moment for them. So, it's kind of like blockbuster season for comic books as well over the summer. Woohoo! <laughs> So Ooh, la, la. I, I wonder if number ones are going to dip off a bit uh, over the summer. Because people are going to be buying more oh, runs. Mm-hmm, tie-ins and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So well, I'm going to do the, the Mike D uh, method and just wait for Midtown. Man, those sales are It makes so much sweet. sense. Mm-hmm. Did you get it on the last one? I ordered a couple things. Yeah. What's your guys' things you've been into? Uh, my boring answer has just been mostly working. I don't really get a whole lot of time, but I've started doing something as like a little pet project with my time that I do get. And that is picky. I picked up drawing again and I've started doing things where I've like, I do many portraits of people and then I turn them into their favorite fictional character. And so far I've done several of them Uh, and I'm really happy with it and I'm just going to keep doing them. They're really, really good. She's been having a good time. Have you done the G-Man? Not yet. I keep requesting nudes, but uh, she won't draw me nude. (laughs) (laughs) Will you do me nude? I swear to God if you say yes. (laughs) She won't draw me like one of her French girls. (laughs) I just saw that a lot of the seasons of the CWDC shows wrapped, so they're coming to Netflix. Ooh. Like all those new episode banners. We're going to be busy, homegirl. <laughs> so I'm going to be drawing and just like <laughs> watching all my shows. <laughs> it's going to be great. I yeah. need to do Riverdale on Netflix. I need to catch up. Same. Yeah. Is that season over yet? It should be. If, yeah. if there's new Flash and yeah. Arrow, there should be new Riverdale pretty soon. Mm, yes. <laughs> but it's seriously, but like after the second season of Sabrina, I don't know if anything's going to shock me. Mm. As far as Riverdale goes. That show was so good. <laughs> yeah, it really was. Are I mean, we all caught up on that? Uh, I'm not. I've only seen the first season. Oh. But I did love it. It's fucking good. The second yeah. season, there's one part that I want to say and I won't. You can do it. Because you <laughs> yeah. haven't seen okay. it. You're going to love the second season even more. Okay. I really, yeah. I'm, I'm going to try not to hype it up I too much, I was super surprised how good that show was. Yeah. Like, I kind of thought it was going to be for Archie fans, and then, like, I just... Nope. I, I was blown away. Now it's for straight up devil fans. <laughs> yeah, if you <laughs> demon if, babies, the, yeah, probably not a spoiler. <laughs> but if you've watched it, then you know what I'm saying when I say the sort of Satan episode. Oh yeah. <laughs> 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 oh you, boy! Did you guys see that uh, Kid Cudi's going to be in season three of, what? of Westworld? Oh, you know who else is going to be in season three? Marshawn Lynch. Are you fucking what? kidding me? Those are two people I love. <laughs> They're going to be in season three of Westworld. Really? Uh, what is so? We we tried so hard, but it's okay. been a bear to get through season so two. I told I told Heather that we were going to rewatch it to, oh. get, to to do that, and she was like, "No, I hate it." <laughs> she hated season, season two. Season two is so, so like, hard. Well, guess what? You guys don't have to because it is a completely different story. Well, I mean, I doesn't know, it but base doesn't itself some... off of season two though? I thought so. Like the, I how... think it's from the aftermath of it, so they don't go into like the whole. But you have to kind of know how it gets there. I read it. Look it up. <laughs> no, I'm gonna fucking Google watch it. Season if you guys... two spoilers. If, if if Kid Cudi is a main character in a in a sci fi show, I'll just yeah. I'll watch a couple yeah. hours and just get caught up. I don't care. Have you seen when he gets drunk and just dances to MGMT on stage? No. 
<laughs> while, no. the, while they're playing. <laughs> oh, I like that even more. I don't now. actually know if he was drunk because isn't he sober now or something like that? Or I don't know. Mm-hmm. Not everyone is straight edge. <laughs> hey, I assume that every, <laughs> I assume everybody I like is straight edge. <laughs> I Don't swear, take this from if me. you get X tattoos on your hands, I'm going to be so upset with you. I almost got a straight edge tattoo before uh, in my straight edge life, and I'm so glad I didn't. So was it, it going to be a ruler? What a parody of myself I would have been. <laughs> that was a good a, math joke. A ruler, yeah. <laughs> so here's my... Uh, so straight edge people have a lot of tattoos. <laughs> mm-hmm. Isn't the the crux of being straight edge is like treat your body like a temple and like not poison it or whatever? And uh, keep it as pure as possible. No, it's like it's like nothing controlling your body, nothing making a decision over you. So a lot of a lot of straight edge people like don't have religion or are vegan. But um, an addiction to tattoos is that where you're getting? I don't. No, I don't no. The, he he totally sideswiped da- me. Dash, I didn't dash your dreams. Because I thought like if they are like keeping their body pure and no, I don't, free of anything, then I think that's like, like yoga. I, I, I know what you're saying. Like, do you it, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> as much as I love this argument over straight edge, I'm know. gonna have to get this podcast started. 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 No, oh god, that's what you should have told them that you're into. He's trying to do throat singing day in oh, and day out. Yeah, I tried. You can imagine can I how exciting it? it is. It's not very for good. Me. Yeah, I'll try it. It's not oh, good. I, it's, it really, you're gonna be like that's stupid. It's I like blame. A- I blame. <laughs> Which you know. That's, that's not, not it. See, like it's not. No, but I. You I, gotta crawl before you run. Um, Listen, I don't want to wake up to that in wait, the middle of the on, night. <laughs> hang on, I have I have so many questions. Okay, were you one? That was that wasn't a joke, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, it's not. You might try to play it off. Okay, but just <laughs> two. Like why? I guess because I think it's funny. Uh, okay, no. Nope. So it is. No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't think it's funny. I think it's kind of cool that they can just like yeah. manipulate the vocal cords and do that. Where did you get the fascinating, like, how did you stumble? I like to go to thrift stores and pick up random CDs. And one of them that I found was, like, it said, uh, like, um, Himalayan or something. It said Napoleon Throat there Singing. We go. And I was like, what the fuck is this? Picked it up, put it in, instantly fell in love with it. I, because had, it sounds like you, Kermit I, in a death metal band. Had you known, <laughs> had you known about it? I had heard murmurs, uh, you know, on chat murmurs. rooms. <laughs> you heard some throat sounds. Uh, <laughs> You know, you experiment in college uh, with some <laughs> weird throat stuff. Can you tell me if I'm doing it? It was reactivated yeah, when we I went know. and hung out with my coworker, so, and he has a bunch of, like, they dissonant had. musical instruments, and he can do it a little bit. Yeah. So he started doing it just, like, joking around, and Greg was like, the fuse yeah. is lit again, mm-hmm. and I was beside right, tell myself. tell me if I'm doing it. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. Close. <laughs> That's more podcast demon. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> I'm probably not doing it at all. I'm probably just making weird noises. But you but Caitlin wakes up to you doing it? That was more of a joke about him no, trying no. to practice. She in the will of the if night, she keeps but... up. Oh. <laughs> Do you um have you ever made the sound when you orgasm? Oh, I'm quite as a mouse <laughs> <laughs> during sex. <laughs> I say <laughs> <laughs> Keep, keep it down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have, it's for me, sex is like a sense, sensory <laughs> deprivation situation. I am blindfolded. Noise canceling headphones. <laughs> Noise canceling headphones. Uh, I have <laughs> both I, quiet comfort. constantly telling me to shoot. Yeah. <laughs> I have <laughs> tiny wine corks up my nose so I can't smell a thing. <laughs> and I, wine. not only am I wearing a condom, I have a tongue condom on. So taste is not an option. <laughs> And my hands, have lidocaine on it? my hands, in oven mitts, duct taped. <laughs> so I can't feel. Well, yeah, I can't feel a thing. And I, I put six condom on, so it's like six condom on, six condom on. <laughs> so, uh, 
And then, but he I, doesn't know this, but we've never actually had sex. <laughs> so yes. you, and you find she that. just warms up a Krispy Kreme donut and <laughs> does her drawings, and I'm in. Oh, Greg, Greg's duct taping up a mid I'm, again. I'm in the bedroom telling the donut to shut up. <laughs> I can hear you. Yeah. <laughs> shut your glazed hole. <laughs> Uh, so wait, what are we here uh, doing? A podcast? I think we started the podcast. <laughs> the road less bone. <laughs> there. Oh yeah, mosquito throat singing. I have seen the people that can. <laughs> yeah, you got it. <laughs> Smooth. Oh, oh, that's pretty good. It's a lot of diaphragm movement, I think. This is, this is my nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is my nightmare. <laughs> All right. Well... <laughs> <laughs> Did anyone stick around <laughs> to hear about the great comic book Road of Bones <laughs> out on IDW this week by Do It, Cormac, and Birch? The Road Less Bone. <laughs> um, road Boners. <laughs> That's like a new show on E or something. <laughs> yeah, you've heard of Cash Cab. Now try Road Boners. <laughs> There's certainly a lot you can do with the title of this book. That's for sure. I love the cover of this. Uh, dude wrote uh, some Ninja Turtles books. Too. Oh, really? Oh, is this Kevin Eastman? It is not. Oh. But uh, that A dude... disciple of Kevin Eastman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a turtle of, of Splinter. Just like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. This, this guy came from Dojo Eastman. Caitlin, what's on... What's, what's down on this road of bones? What's... What am I trying to say? If you, if you walk down a road of bones, what are you going to find... Down, answer, down the I'm bone sure. road less traveled. <laughs> <laughs> A.K.A. my my butthole. <laughs> Dear God. <laughs> hey, it's your episode. You can say that whatever you want, hearty, big guy. <laughs> Is that the rule? Hearty intro. Hmm? Oh, your, that you I'm, can say whatever you want? On your episode, you can just say whatever you want? No, it's not a rule. <laughs> <laughs> 100% not a rule. <laughs> okay. Uh, Roman is our lead in The Road of Bones, and he is trying to survive in a hellish Russian political prison camp. But along the way, he makes some nefarious friends, and they hatch an escape plan that kind of works so far. (laughs) Um, But then we learn he may have another friend or frenemy in the form of a Domovic, which we kind of gleaned was a Russian guardian spirit that's watching over him. And I think you were about to say that it's in the 1950s, so that does make it a period piece. Did you hate this, BK? Uh, did not hate it. All I, right. Yeah, I actually kind of liked it. Um, I don't think there's anything in it to make it like too much of a period piece. Yeah, I don't like history, as it were. <laughs> uh, as it and were. yet you live in it. My <laughs> God. And I have a degree in it. Uh, so. You have a degree in history? I yeah. thought you had a degree in like um, other stuff. I had got two undergrads, one in communication and one in oh communication uh, history. That was a waste of time and money. Um, but uh, yeah, I liked it. The go- it it gets really violent really quickly in the gulag. Is it a gulag? Is that yeah? I think I, think they I didn't know gulags. what that term meant, so I steered <laughs> clear of it. Okay. <laughs> rather than looking it up. You're you're right. It got violent really quick. I don't. I don't know why. <laughs> that part was a little bit lost. I mean, like if there was a riot all of a sudden. <laughs> well, that was part of the plan, wasn't it? That they would cause a riot. Well, that the um, the other people would, like the Suka or whatever, who they were talking yeah. about. Just so those three guys could escape. That seemed no, like no, an no, awful no. lot. It was, of, it, it was that like was an part of the of power. Yeah. Okay. But I was even talking about just like literally the. I think the second page. Um, oh one, yeah. One of the 
Russian masters. I don't know what you call them. A guard? A guard. There we go. <laughs> yeah. uh, they Some like, questions have just popped into my head. That <laughs> the prison daddies? I don't. I don't know. <laughs> pr- yeah, one of the prison daddies kills one of the prison children. Are you my prison daddy? <laughs> In a way. Uh, and, uh, yeah. In a way. <laughs> it uh, made me not want to go to prison. This comic, <laughs> this comic book should not have <laughs> alone been the reason. That's why that you liked is it. Deterring that you from prison. Be its tagline. You won't want to go to prison. It taught me something. <laughs> this will. This book will ruin prison for you. <laughs> yeah, put this back. <laughs> I'll pay it a compliment before I diss it on something. Ooh, a compliment sandwich. I appreciated that, even though this was translated from Russian, that they didn't do a lot of like. Uh, in gulag, <laughs> yeah. you know, in like Soviet Russia, yeah, bone road, you just like <laughs> s- skipping prepositions and yeah, mm-hmm. and shit like that. Like, it was just it, it helped me get into the book not having like a hokey dialogue written, mm-hmm. that it was like a cohesive conversation right. between people. Well, I think I've earned this moment where I get to say something shitty about this book because I said something nice about it. <laughs> you have earned that, yes. Um. I often felt like when I turned the page that the pages were like stuck together and I missed something because I felt like it jumped scenes quite a bit and I didn't realize how we got from A to B. My second issue with the book was that the art style was so sketchy and dark that every character looked exactly the same to me. Thank you. And that made it so hard to follow. And, and when they did a close-up on their face, they all looked to be, like, screaming or yelling. <laughs> yeah. In Soviet <laughs> Russia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you always scream. I, uh, I was even reading it digitally, and it still seemed like... Did it? Just yeah. even scrolling, like, this isn't very fluid. Why do people not have beards when they're in prison? I don't understand clean shaven, especially in like gulags in the 50s. Like, where are you getting razors? Because I would have killed myself <laughs> if I had a shaving razor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. It is. Yeah. yeah. They should all look like Rasputin. So that's another reason not to like this book is <laughs> yeah. the... Uh, not factually accurate with facial hair. Plot hole with the facial hair. I did kind of like, though, that this friend that he's feeding, the spirit, we don't actually get the sense is good. The spirit, the monster. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that's what I liked about it is that it kind of became a surprise horror book. Yeah. And like at first it was just like dreary, like weird Russian prison, which was also kind of uh, very interesting to me. Yeah. But then when it became like there's a, a boogeyman, like scary thing that like this unwieldy force that like is going to rip a rabbit in half. Um, while the prisoners are basically just in like Siberia or somewhere just trying to like survive the cold. Yeah. I was like, I can get down on this. Like, well, and weren't his like buddies going to either kill him or eat him? They were thinking about heavily insinuated that that was going to happen. Like hunger is a continual theme throughout the book. Yeah. Scarcity of food. And it's inferred several times that they only brought him along in their prison escape. So they would have someone to eat to keep them moving. And they make that comment about, like, he's got some meat on his bones, even yes. though he's, like, in this prison camp. Uh-huh. But that's when this monster shows up, makes things a bit interesting, is, yeah, like, pulling a rabbit in half, but you don't... <laughs> the like, worst magician. If that were happening, I'd be like, okay, maybe you're on my side for now, but do I even like what's happening? Like, that's still a little bit... Yeah, do you... I guess the question is, do you want... A demon on your side. Yeah. <laughs> he's on your side, but he's still a demon. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Have you, well, have you ever fallen in love with the bad boy? <laughs> you mean have I ever looked oh, in the mirror? Have I? <laughs> <laughs> um, that was good. Yes. Yeah. I, well, I, not a well. I've, I've fallen in love with my fair share of bad boys. Uh, Mark Summers, looking at you, <laughs> double dare me. Uh, but I get the exact same sentiment of just like. I know I shouldn't be doing this, but oh, we're going to do this. Mm-hmm. And that's what you do when you make a deal with the devil. The, you know damn well that come the end of this deal, you're going to have to kiss Mark Summers square in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you doing Mark Summers dirty like that? <laughs> he did me dirty. <laughs> Hasn't called me back in six years. He uh, did a, like a reunion book, I think. He wrote a book about his experiences. 
<laughs> Great one to one parallel. Anyway. Like the demon in uh, Road of Bones. Every time I say it, it makes me I, laugh. Always, I always Road of Bones <laughs> is a porn I name, by the way. I think that you you're making the name up every time you say it. <laughs> I know. It doesn't sound I keep right. thinking I, I'm like doing a spoof on it, but it's yeah. actually Road of Bones. We before we started the Bone podcast, Road? would that be better? No, it sounds like National Lampoon presents Road of Bones. It should have been, mm-hmm. should have right, been called Van Wilder uh, 4. Yeah, Russian Death Dick. <laughs> uh, okay. Grown of Gnomes. <laughs> Not Dick. I don't know why I said Dick. Russian Death Camp. That's the thing you're going to regret from 97 episodes of podcasting. You, you said Dick once? <laughs> well, it's like, it's just, it's such a weird Tourette's thing to be like, oh, I'm going to try to be funny. I'm going to say male genitalia now. Oh, I do this all the time on this podcast that I'll catch myself saying just like, fucking butts. Yeah. <laughs> and in the moment, I think I'm funny. And then you listen back to it and you're like, there's no joke in saying the word fuck or butt. <laughs> like, that's not what makes a person funny. Well, to be fair, our 13 year old boy demographic is loving <laughs> <Yeah>. those <laughs> kind curse. of hot takes. They curse. <laughs> uh, hold on. Can I... we're the, so, we're the yeah, bad, time out. We're the bad boy that some of <laughs> our demographic the, yeah. has mm-hmm. fallen in love with. <laughs> so I, I initially thought the, the demon, whatever thing he was feeding was like a protector. Because that's what the story sa- in, in the but it's beginning chaotic. of the book. It, like, it doesn't... Oh, it, so it's chaotic evil? It, or is it chaotic neutral? Uh, it's... Um, neutral evil. <laughs> yeah. Neutral like, evil. That's probably pretty good. I what's mean, Yogi, what's can... Yogi Berra? Chaotic... He's a bear. But is he He chaotic? loves picnic baskets. He's chaotic <laughs> He's chaotic neutral, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yogi Berra. The baseball player? Uh, <laughs> both. <laughs> I can't get over that. Is, it the, is, it, is it the bear it. from Jellystone or the baseball common. player? The bear. The bear from Jellystone. Okay. So he is he is chaotic neutral. I've never yes. heard someone say pick a nick baskets that casually. <laughs> <laughs> I also could, if you had a gun to my head, could not have told you that Yogi Bear is from fucking Jellystone. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm a huge fan of the Dan Aykroyd film Yogi Bear with TJ Miller and Justin Timberlake as Boo Boo. <laughs> that's when TJ Miller had that brain tumor, right? Yeah, that's when TJ Miller was, well, he probably still was a sexual deviant, but now we all know oh, it. Mm. He's a sexual deviant, which is... Fine. He's a sexual assaulter. Is that what you're trying to say? Um. Well, alleged. Currently alleged. Okay. Because like deviant just means you like to like fuck like pudding or something. something deviant like, isn't necessarily dangerous. Uh, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Uh, my bad. That's true. So uh, I want to give a formal apology to all my sexual deviants out there. Mm-hmm. You're doing yeah. fine. Be safe as long as you're not hurting Don't anybody else. Shame. Yeah. Or, or yourself. yourself. Be deviants, babies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, anyone who creates deviant art. Sick. Hell yeah. Did we have a place that we left off in that conversation that we need to Yeah, we were talking about the demon. Yes. Do we know that it's a demon? No. Okay, so one of the things that I think about this is that he just believes it's a Dubrovnik. And <laughs> Yeah. By the way, perfect Russian pronun- Thank pronunciation. You. Yeah. <laughs> and that was just his assumption, but it turns out it's some evil fucked up demon thing. But he's at least been doing oh. it favors. What yeah. if it isn't? What yeah, if it's like a burn red. victim? From, like it's an actual human. That's in no a, way. Oh, you say no way? I say no way. Why? That, because it was like gnarly scar tissue body. Mm-hmm. And it was like naked in frozen Siberia. He's also starving. Mm-hmm. He could be hallucinating, right? He very well could be. Which is, that's a stupid right. Well, he, he, he proposed that too in the book. Oh, yeah, yeah, What yeah. if he is hallucinating and he's the one that goes crazy and protects himself against these two? Like... And eats himself? Oh. Sorry, I railroaded <laughs> that. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, You're what good. if it was multiple personality disorder and he's all three guys who escaped? And he's also the rabbit? Ooh. And then slowly he's going to self-actualize as each of his personalities die off in the harsh climate of Siberia. Is this the prequel to Fight Club? And a Christmas story? And skele- That's implausible. And Skeleton Key? <laughs> and, and Split? And Memento? <laughs> and Hunger? And R- Road of Bones? <laughs> Two? 
<laughs> More bones. <laughs> Road trip. This is a prequel to Road of Bones 2. <laughs> Roadier and oh, bonier. That's what they should have called it. Prequel to Road of Bones 2. <laughs> Electric Boogaloo. Yeah. <laughs> Every first issue. <laughs> prequel to the second issue. Path to Skeleton. Uh, and that's why we don't have sponsors. <laughs> Would we even want a sponsor? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh. I'm not well, then that maybe punk, I should answer those emails. I'm not that punk rock where I'm like, oh, money. <laughs> okay, to be fair, this week was slow. That's why we're only covering one book. This was the only number one I could get in my store that wasn't Clue, the comic book. I don't even know what that is. It's a board game. I understand that. <laughs> I guess, sorry. I do know what that is. I didn't see that it was a comic book. Out. I didn't either. Yep. Clue, the board game? Clue, the board game, the comic book version. I think it's something that hmm. they've done before, too, and this was just like a new storyline in the Clueiverse. Yeah. And so it was a departure from the movie. Yeah. Too. Right. Okay. So normally I'm we're more open to covering these things the first time they happen, but if we're iter- iteratively starting a Clue comic book series over and over and over again, <laughs> we're not going to cover Clue number 1 volume no. 40. Mhm. So we passed on that one. And there was a couple of War of the Realms things that started uh, yeah, too, and I'm just like, and like we it. said, Marvel isn't paying us, so skip. <laughs> they're they're probably not bad. I haven't read them yet, but that's it for this week on um, First Issue Club. Give us five stars, baby. Five stars. Five stars. Five stars. Five, five stars. Five stars. Five stars. <laughs> He's simply magnificent. Podcast's over. This has been another episode of First Issue Club. We are a proud member of the Fountain City Frequency family of podcasts. Our music is provided by Primary Color Music. We are recorded in KCUR Studios. You can find us, rate us, friend, and follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, email, and your favorite listening platforms at First Issue Club, F-I-R-S-T.